सो गाइज हैप्पी रिपब्लिक डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू दिस इज विक्रम सिंह सैंगर परस्यूमिंग एम बी बी एस फ्रॉम जे एम सी ग्वालियर नॉट प्रेजेंटिंग अ ब्यूटिफुल लेक्चर ऑन द ग्रेट टॉपिक दैट इज द हाई रिजोल्यूशन इजोफेशियल मैनोमेट्री फॉर द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एक्लेशिया कारिया एंड द शिकागो क्लासिफिकेशन गाइज आई विल बी पोस्टिंग द पार्ट टू ऑफ एक्लेशिया कारिया जस्ट आफ्टर दिस सेशन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट So guys, let us discuss one of the complicated topics that is the high resolution esophageal manometry, right? So first we will discuss the HRM catheter. Okay, this is the mouth end, and these are the beads here. Okay, so these are 36 in number, right? And these are actually the solid state pressure transducers, right? And which are to be placed one centimeter apart, right? So this is what the HRM catheter, and that is used to measure. the pressure inside the esophagus and this is inserted just like the insertion of rice tube here so this is what the catheter one is and now we will check for the esophageal pressure topography right that is the graphical orientation and graphical presentation of the pressures inside the esophagus which is measured with the help of the high resolution esophageal manometer here okay so these are the red colored areas and these are the areas of high pressure so in this topogram the red color areas are the areas of high pressure here right and the yellow colored areas are the areas of medium pressure and subsequently the green colored ones are the medium to low pressure areas and the blue to sky blue colored areas these are the areas with the low pressure here and we will measure the distance from this upper incisor okay so this is this strip is the upper esophageal sphincter here right and this is the body of esophagus right and this is the lower esophageal sphincter and this area is the stomach here right so the ideally the distance should be 15 cm here right the first constriction and distance up to this area is 40 cm here right and this 25 cm gap that is of esophagus here right so this gap is the esophagus from the upper esophageal sphincter to the lower esophageal sphincter so this is what the whole representation of esophagus throughout the y axis and on the x axis we are just plotting the time here so first we need to swallow something okay so first that is the point of swallow we are just swallowing something right and when this food stuff the swallowed stuff that reaches up to the upper esophageal sphincter that imparts pressure so the area of high pressure is developed at upper esophageal sphincter for a transient time period right and just after one second that food bolus that enters to the body after one second after one second that food bolus reaches up to the body that is the body right the upper part of that and after one second that goes down and further that goes down and further that reaches up to the lower esophageal sphincter and then onwards that reaches up to the stomach okay so we are just finding a pressure wave right a pressure wave is traversing this is the pressure wave right and this is traversing whole length of the esophagus and that reaches eventually up to the stomach after the time period of on an average 10 seconds right on an average after 10 seconds whatever we have swallowed is reached up to the stomach here right so this is the area right so this is what the pressure wave associated with the swallow right but when we are not swallowing the tone of upper esophageal sphincter remains the same that is the 60 mm hg so every time the upper esophageal sphincter is maintaining its own tone that is 60 mm hg so pressure at upper esophageal sphincter is always higher so this circular red areas are the pressure areas that is showing the 60 mm hg pressure of upper esophageal sphincter that is for all the time so as like the upper esophageal sphincter the lower esophageal sphincter also maintains its own tone that is of 6 to 26 mm hg okay that is lesser than upper one but still present okay so just before the food bolus reaches up to the les that relaxes i mean the les is relaxed just before the food bolus is reached up to the les so this the area okay that is relaxed 
so when it is relaxed the pressure of this area will be lesser so red circles will be minute here okay since the lower esophageal sphincter that relaxes when the food stuff the food bolus reaches to the les that relaxes okay this is the point of relaxation here okay so this is what the topography of the pressure that is developed when the food bolus is being is being swallowed so as we have discussed this time period is 10 seconds right so this is the normal physiology that is occurring in you and me right so we are discussing the fewer terms associated with the high resolution esophageal manometry these are the irp okay dci cdp and dl so what is the irp irp is the integrated relaxation pressure and what is that as we have taken the segment the time segment of 10 seconds done and we need to pick the areas of maximum relaxation at les so at les we need to pick the areas of maximum relaxation as the relaxation is maximum then pressure will be minimum right so this is the area of high pressure high pressure high pressure okay so what are the areas of the low pressure this is the area of low pressure this is the area of low pressure and this whole area is of low pressure at les right just after the swallow so this is the line of swallow that we have swallowed at the zero time and during the period of 10 seconds we need to pick those four seconds that is having the lesser pressure or the highest relaxation and this is the first second that is the one second as well and that is the two seconds so total duration will be the four seconds and these four seconds are the areas where the pressure is minimum relaxation is maximum so we have picked the areas where the pressure is lowest here so this is the area that is the area that is the area so the total duration will be four seconds here and and what is the irp irp is the average pressure of those four seconds at which the pressure is minimum or relaxation is maximum at les just after deglutition here right so that is the pressure average so the pressure average of those four seconds and if this value will be lesser than 15 mmhg the condition is normal when the pressure value the average pressure value is less than 15 mmhg and when this pressure value the pressure average value is more than 15 mmhg that means the condition is the achalasia cardia here okay that is the achalasia so this is what the irp is and we will switch to the next term that is dci the distal contractile integral so what is the dci dci is the distal contractile integral right so this is the esophagus here right and this is the stomach here right and this is the transition zone between the upper skeletal muscles of esophagus and the lower smooth muscles of esophagus here so that is the transition zone so we need to calculate the area of distal portion of this transition zone okay at which we need to measure the pressure distal to this transition zone right so what is the dci here dci is the strength of contraction distal to the transition zone right so that is the pressure of this area right so normal value in you and me that will be 450 to 8000 and the unit is mmhg multiplied by seconds multiplied by the centimeters that means in this length in this centimeter in one second what is the pressure that is the dci here and that is the normal value that is the 450 to 8000 mmhg second centimeter here okay so if it is more than 8000 that means the esophagus is hypercontractile and if it is lesser than 450 that means esophagus is hypocontractile here right and that is having two types of course and the first one is less than 100 mmhg second centimeter and second category is that is between 100 to 450 mmhg second centimeter okay if it is less than 100 mmhg second centimeter that means esophagus is not able to contract well so 100 percent failure of peristalsis so 100 percent failed peristalsis is there 
and if it is between the 100 to 450 that means some power is there to the esophagus so the weak peristalsis can happen here so weak peristalsis is occurring here okay when the pressure is between the 100 to 450 and if it is less than 100 mm hg second centimeter that means esophagus is not having that power to undergo the peristalsis so peristalsis is 100 percent failed here right so this is what the dci so guys what is the cdp cdp is the contractile deceleration point right so this is the esophagus here this is the esophagus and this is our stomach here right okay so this is the transition zone between the upper skeletal muscles and the inner smooth muscles here right and this is the point of turn that is called as cdp right so what is this point of turn so this is the food bolus here right and that travels and that traverses whole length of esophagus with the help of the peristalsis right and cdp is a point after which the peristalsis is not needed to propulse the food bolus to reach up to the stomach rather only gravity is enough the gravity is sufficient to pull the food bolus to the stomach here this is the length of esophagus to which the peristalsis is needed to propulse the food bolus this is the length for which the peristalsis is not needed only gravity is enough to pull the food to the stomach this point is called as the cdp here right this is cdp and what is the distal latency here okay and as we have discussed that is the esophagus here right that is the stomach here so this point is the cdp right and this is the upper esophageal sphincter right and the food bolus has to travel through the this portion of esophagus so the time duration between the opening of the upper esophageal sphincter to reach up to the cdp this time is the distal latency here and this time should be less than 4.5 seconds in the normal individuals but in the case of the patient of achalasia cardia especially the type 3 achalasia cardia this time duration is more than 4.5 seconds that's why the distal latency is more than 4.5 seconds in the case of class 3 achalasia cardia right so in the normal individuals that should be less than 4.5 in the case of the ecclesia cardia especially class 3 ecclesia cardia that is more than 4.5 here so now let us discuss the chicago classification the latest version the version 3 of chicago classification here right so we have three types of ecclesia cardia number one is a classic one second one is a pan esophageal compressions or pan esophageal pressurization right and third one is the spastic ecclesia here right and as you can observe the IRP that is mean IRP that is same in all three classes that is more than 15 mm Hg here right that is the same value that is a common thing here so second term is the DCI here so DCI in the case of class 1 achalasia that is less than 100 mm Hg second centimeter that means esophagus is not having enough power to go for the peristalsis that's why peristalsis is 100% failed here and as we have discussed this point in our last slides that is the failed peristalsis when the dci is less than 100 here and which is written in the case of class 1 achalasia so 100 percent failed peristalsis is there and as we have discussed distal latency is normal that is less than 4.5 seconds in the case of class 1 but so in the case of class 3 achalasia distal latency is increased as it is more than 4.5 seconds here right so this is done here and we have discussed the class 1 ecclesia now class 2 here right in this case the pan esophageal pressurization is there right so whole of the esophagus is being so compressed is being so pressurized that the measurement of dci is not possible so the measurement of dci is failed here and that's why the peristalsis is also failed in the case of the class 2 ecclesia right this is class 2 and third class we have discussed IRP more than 15 which is a common thing of course and in this case the spastic contractions are occurring in the body of esophagus here right so spastic contractions are there that's why DCI is more than 450 in this case in the class 1 the DCI is less than 100 that's why 
any type of contraction is absent in the case of esophagus but in this case of spastic achalasia the dci is more than 450 that's why spasms are occurring in the esophagus okay and we have discussed the last point that is the distal latency is more than 4.5 seconds so this is it with respect to the version 3 of chicago classification of the achalasia cardia so thank you for watching Guys, I know that it is quite brainstorming session for you and me. But if you're just having any doubt and query, you can go for the comment section below. Hit the like button for the sake of the motivation. And don't forget to subscribe. Pressing the like icon will give me some vibe. So we will meet at the part 2 of Ecclesia Cardia. And till then, keep integrating. Thank you.